Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 352 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast, coming at you live from my hotel in Glasgow, Scotland. I'm in Scotland right now, and let me tell you, all right, this is a beautiful country full of uh, some of the most amazing, fun, friendly people who I cannot fucking understand at all. I don't know what they're saying. I have no idea what they're saying, ever. And I've met Scottish people in my travels outside of Scotland, but now I'm in the thick of it. I, I can't understand what you guys are saying. I'm sorry, all right? The Scottish people that leave your country, they figure out how to talk to people that are not Scottish. I assume by necessity, because they probably arrive wherever they're going and fucking no one can understand them, so they figure it out. But here, it's my problem. I have to figure it out. And I tried my best. I've been here for two days. No idea what you guys are saying, all right? New merch, out. Check it out, all right? The Spears... Pizza parlor. Check it out. Check out the back. All right. Nice. Look at that. All right. This is a sample. I think the back print is going to be a little bit higher on the shirts that you guys get, but they're on sale right now for pre-order for uh, only three more weeks. Lewspears.com. We've got uh, a t-shirt, which is the best t-shirt we've ever designed. It's done by um, the team that designs a lot of the cool shirt stuff. So this is actually the first time we've ever gotten merch made with an actual t-shirt designer. Normally we get someone who can draw or a graphic designer and we uh, have made like something kind of cool in collaboration with my ideas and their ideas. But this is the first time where I came to like a professional merchandise designer that actually knows what colors to pick so that it prints well. Uh, This is the best blank we've ever used. So it's like super soft, super comfortable. The cut of the shirt is awesome. It's the best t-shirt we've ever made. And for the first time, we got lapel pins too, which is really exciting. We've been looking at lapel pins because I've been looking at... I love lapel pins. I love having little collectible things that are like cheap, but something that's really cool that is still like high quality while a good price point that you guys can collect. And we kind of landed on um, pins because you can just either get a denim jacket and just or a vest or something if you're a lesbian and uh, just pin all your pins on it. We've always been talking about denim vests and pins on this show and denim jackets and pins. So it's a Good fit. And this is the first of many pins that we'll be uh, putting out. So if you want to uh, start your little Spears kit pin collection, we've got a bundle with a shirt and the pins as well. Anyway, no idea what anyone in this country is saying. Okay. And another thing that I've noticed about Scotland is this country has uh, some of, some of the most beautiful people I've ever seen. But they also have most of the ugliest people I've ever seen. <laughs> like, if I were to take the the top 100 most beautiful people I've ever seen in my life, there might be one to three Scottish people in there. But if I was to take the top 100 ugliest people I've ever seen, there's at least 25 Scottish people. And I saw them walking around this morning. <laughs> I don't know what's in the water, but uh, they've got to stop drinking it. Um, but, you know, maybe that's why they've got such good personalities uh, in this country. Um, and, and, and to clarify, none of them were seen at my show, all right? I've only ever seen hot people at my show. That's a fact. Um, so, yeah, I'm here in Scotland, uh, in Glasgow. I uh, am just loving it. I've only got two shows left in Ireland. So, tomorrow I fly to Ireland. You know what's crazy? This is my, I think it's my 10th city. So this is city number 10, and I'm about to take my first flight. Every other way I've traveled has been the fucking train. The train system here is unbelievable. Like, if I was traveling to to 10 different Australian cities, right, I'm taking 10 flights. I'm spending thousands of dollars on fucking plane tickets, and it's a miserable experience. Here, you get on a train for, like, fucking... 60 bucks. You sit down, they've got a table there. It's smooth, it's quiet. There's there's no customs bullshit. You just get on and then you get off. They serve tea. It's phenomenal. I really love it. Although, 
there is the possibility of missing a train and a train connection. And I fucked up so bad one night. So I, right, because I'm such a massive nerd, where was I staying? I was staying in, uh, in Manchester. Was that where I was going from? I had a few days. No, it wasn't Manchester. I had a few days in, uh, maybe it was Birmingham. I think it was Birmingham, right? I'm in Birmingham for a couple of days. Now, Birmingham is close to Nottingham. And do you know what's in Nottingham? All right. You know how Muslims have Mecca. You know how Catholics have the Vatican. You know how gays in Melbourne have Puff Doof. All right. For me, my Mecca, my cathedral, my Puff Doof is Warhammer World. Okay. Warhammer Games Workshop is an English company and they run the entire business from Nottingham, England. I booked this tour, all right, around giving me an entire day, eight hours, to go to Nottingham, not to do a show, but to see Warhammer World. That's my Disney World, all right? You've, you've seen Disney adults? Wait till you see Warhammer adults, all right? They have a fucking... They've got a bar, they've got a restaurant, they've got a gaming hall full of like 50 gaming tables, they've got a giant painting station, they've got a fucking tank out the front. A tank, dude. They got a tank, they got a statue. But the thing I was most excited for was they've got a giant diorama museum, a huge exhibit full of the best painted Warhammer miniatures that anyone's ever painted. Demon sword, golden demon winning, Slayer's fucking sword winning miniatures, all right? It's it's fucking Disneyland for people with BO, okay? I take the train from Birmingham to Nottingham, hour and a half, fucking easy. At this point, I'm 70% of the way through my tour. I'm thinking I'm a train expert. Now, how it works... In England, is what I had been doing was I've been buying all of my tickets using the app on my phone. But then I'm like, oh, if I'm using the app, it's probably like 30% more expensive to buy the tickets, right? Because Apple is an evil company. So now I'm like, oh, well, I'm an expert. And every single train I take, I just get on at one city and I get off at the other city. So I'm thinking, well, this will be easy. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just go to... I looked at the, the, tra- the train timetables... Uh, on my phone, and then I thought, I'm going to buy them in person using the machine. I bought a paper ticket. All right? And it said, Birmingham to Nottingham. So I put my ticket in the machine. I get on the train. I get on the train in Birmingham. I get off at Nottingham. Nailed it. Easy. I go to Warhammer World. I'm there for eight hours. Eight hours. Open till close. I'm not kidding. All right? And keep in mind, I have been in England... At this point, for three and a half, three weeks, I think, because I was in London for two weeks, the most populated city in this country, and then I'd been to like six other cities. I've been here for three weeks, and I had not been noticed by a single English fan anywhere. I'd been stopped by a couple of Australian tourists in London, which I thought was kind of cool, but I'm like, that doesn't really count. That's not my first, you know... English fan spotting me in the wild. Because that's crazy, all right? I get stopped all the time in Australia, but if I'm getting stopped in countries I don't live, that's cool, right? So at this point, I haven't been stopped by a single Englishman or woman. I go to Warhammer World, bro, I couldn't move. (laughs) I was so fucking famous in Warhammer World. (laughs) And that's sick. That is so funny. Of course I'm famous in Warhammer World. Where, where else am I going to be famous? In the street? At a pub? In public? No, all right? I'm famous in Warhammer World and Frankston. <laughs> Dude, even the guy that worked at Warhammer World, I chatted to him for fucking 
like an hour because he was a he was a fan. Actually, that's very funny. He also didn't count because he was Australian, right? So we just got talking about how amazing this place is, like Warhammer World, as from the perspective of Australians who like all we had were like shitty little games workshop stores at Chadston Shopping Centre. And we would peer into the windows and go, Mommy, can I buy that? She would go, it's $60. Fucking kill yourself, idiot. No. Right? So we're bonding over that. And then, I shit you not, 30 minutes into this conversation, he goes, you know, you look really familiar. You sound really familiar too. And I went, oh, yeah. He goes, you look like this uh, comedian YouTuber guy that I used to watch. And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I, I got a new face. That's maybe why you don't recognize me, you know? And and then he goes, ha ha, yeah, very funny. I bet you, you know, went to a surgeon and said, oh, give me the Lewis Spears. I'm like, no, 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 I am Lewis. I I literally got a new face. <laughs> and, he, and he goes, oh my God. I showed him my before and after. He goes, that's the guy I used to watch. That's you? Crazy. That's been happening a little bit. People are so unsure that it's me. Very funny stuff. So, dude, I'm in Warhammer World. I'm there for fucking... I'm there for eight hours, dude. I'm eight hours. I was just staring into glass cabinets, all right? Watching people play games, all right? They, they, I, and I was... Put it this way. I went to the Tower of London in London, okay? And I was surrounded by 2,000-year-old Roman walls. I went into torture chambers. I was looking at suits of armor from medieval times and wars. I got to go into King Henry's bedroom where he used to have sex with his wives shortly before beheading them. I went into a prison tower that had graffiti that was so old, carved into the walls, that the English they were writing in, I could only read half of it. That's how old it was. There was German. There was Spanish. There were beautiful murals about Jesus Christ, painstakingly carved into the walls of, an, of a thousand-year-old castle by prisoners who were trying to show their devotion to God, even though they knew that they were never leaving that cell. And I was so much more impressed and in awe and ecstatic looking at little plastic toy soldiers that autistic men and women had painted and put in a glass cabinet at Warhammer World. Like that was still the, the most amazing experience of my life all right i know that i i may have appeared to be a 30 year old australian man but what i was actually in warhammer world was a fucking 12 year old boy going oh my god i dreamed of this and now i'm here so cool i sold out two shows in london whatever i actually don't give a fuck all right this whole tour was to facilitate my visit to Warhammer World. Thank you very much for your business, all right? And you know what? I will be back. And cool, the shows are great. And I'm loving meeting people. And they've been, it's been an incredible experience. And this is one of the most amazing uh, two countries I've ever been to in my life. But that pales in comparison to walking into a museum full of little plastic fucking miniatures and smelling the paint and glue and body odor of hundreds of unwashed nerds, all right? That's really why I'm here. So I spent eight hours there and then I got talking to the guy and dude, they run the whole fucking business from Nottingham, all right? They make the plastic miniatures there. He was telling me that, dude, we're standing on top of the factory that makes the incredibly expensive plastic. I was nerding out. We're talking about books. Anyway, I know that this is not why you listen to my show. I could do two hours on my fucking Warhammer World visit, and I'm going to spare you that, all right? That's going to be a burden carried by all of the important people in my life is every now and then I'm going to bring up that time I went to Nottingham and went to Warhammer World for eight hours, 
all right? So anyway, let's skip ahead eight hours, all right? For your, you, and you're welcome, all right? You should write in the comment section, thank you very much for telling the briefest version of the Warhammer World visit that you could. Dude, they had, they had a kitbashed army of Tau soldiers, right? Smashed with orcs. So it looked like orcs had stolen Tau armor. And war- it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You don't care. And I, I'm sorry. So I leave Warhammer World, all right? I got there at like 10 in the morning. I'm fucking leaving at closing time, all right? I've been there for an entire work day. I put in the hours. I was looking through to plan for this podcast. I was looking through my phone to look at photos that I had taken. And I took at least 100 photos. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm going to look at them again. I, I see this is why when when people are like, dude, you're autistic, you should get diagnosed. I don't need to get diagnosed. I took a hundred photos at Warhammer World, bro. I sold out two shows in London and I was more excited by the plastic in a glass cabinet. Like that I'm gonna save myself the money and the time to be like, I reckon I'm on the specky. So anyway, I leave Warhammer World. You're welcome. I'm skipping ahead. And remember. I didn't use the app to buy my ticket home. So I got a Birmingham to Nottingham train, right? And I'm leaving Birmingham the next morning to go to the next city. And I look at my ticket and it says Nottingham to Birmingham. So I'm thinking, all right, I just get on the fucking Birmingham train and then I get off at Birmingham. I get on the train and here's the thing about England and Scotland and I assume Ireland, all right? The culture here is so friendly, so much friendlier than Australia, all right? Australia is still a prison colony. We just don't have guards anymore. We've, we self-police, right? That's why we have tall poppy syndrome, where if anyone stands out or strives or tries hard or thinks of themselves in a positive light, the group will talk them down And be like, oh, what, you think you're better than me? You know what that is? Dude, don't draw attention to yourself. We'll all get in trouble. We're prisoners, right? Uh, There's a level of general suspicion in Australia, uh, especially on nights out, that I have not felt in this country at all, right? Where I'll, I'll put it this way, all right? When I was in Bristol, I went out after my show, okay, to get pizza. This guy comes up to me, just starts talking to me, asks me what I'm getting. I'm in my fucking prisoner Australian mindset of like, why is this guy talking to me? What does he want? And then he starts talking about how, how tall I am and that I'm taller than him. Now, whenever this happens in Australia, it's always some fucking six foot five fucking loser whose only self-worth comes from being the tall guy. And whenever they meet me, they fucking hate it. And they act like I'm a threat. And there have been so many times where dudes that are 6'4 to 6'7 that have just almost ended and sometimes do end in like confrontations or physical shit because they act like I'm being taller than them at them to make them feel like shit. When really what's happening is their entire self-worth and personality is based on being the tall guy. And then when they meet someone taller, they're like, oh fuck, that's my thing. Who am I? I have to beat this guy in a fight. So whenever a 6'5 dude starts talking to me about being tall, I'm like, I know where this is going. Anyway, dude comes up to me, he goes, man, you're so tall. I'm really tall. Usually I'm the tall one. And I'm like, here we fucking go. And then he just starts talking to me. He's like, what are you doing? And we have a lovely conversation. And he goes, oh, I'm out with a bunch of work friends. If this is your only night in the city, why don't you come out with us? We'll show you the city. And then I hung out with them, right? Guys and girls all night. They took me to all these different pubs and joints. And we had a lovely time. No one got reprehensibly pissed and started fighting or arguing or vomiting. We just had like a lovely time. 
And then I went home. And the biggest difference in the, between the nightlife of Australia and these two countries is, and even this is during the day, whenever people enter a space, it's a communal space and we're all hanging out together, right? So everyone mingles and talks to everyone and there's no like suspicion about the other person's motives because we're not a prison colony or it, they're not a prison colony like Australia is. Like whenever you go out to a club or a pub or out at night with your group of friends, in Australia, it's like every group has a bubble surrounding them and the bubble doesn't want to push into and mix with everyone else's bubble. It's like there's dozens of separate groups and they don't mingle at all in Australia. And sometimes if they, if they do mingle, it's like a fight or it's a problem. Here, the bubble starts at the door, you enter it and you're all in the same bubble and you're all hanging out. It's really different. It's a very different, much way less suspicious vibe and energy and spirit in this country. So we go into this club and fucking the group that I'm with just starts joining the space and talking to people. We got there pretty early. There's a live band playing. There are only two people on the dance floor and they are dancing so ridiculously that I laugh from the bar because they're obviously like doing it as a joke. And then as the night went on, that's just how everyone in this country dances. Like fucking, like they're doing it as a joke, you know? And then I get on the dance floor and I try to dance like an Australian, which is just, you hold your drink and then you bend your knees in time with the music sometimes. Uh, and if you move your hips at all, that's gay. <laughs> Like, if you show any rhythm, that's fucking gay, brother. Get off the dance floor. Um, and, and I just got made fun of for not having enough fun. Not in a malicious way. It's so weird. If you have too much fun in Australia, you'll, you'll, you'll get into a fight. People here definitely drink more often than Australia, but I don't see the level of binging and blackout drunk behavior that I do in Australia. I know that does exist in a big way in uh, England and Scotland, uh, but I haven't seen it as often as I have seen it in Australia. It's interesting. But anyway, the reason I'm saying this, that like when you enter a space, it's like a communal space. People have been coming up to me and talking to me in this country so often that it took me two weeks to just fucking relax and have a conversation with a stranger. Like I was, I was in a bookshop looking at fucking books and then this, this, this girl around my age just starts talking to me about books and I'm like, what the fuck? And then I find out all, all this stuff about her. She's teaching English in China. We have a lovely chat and then I leave the bookshop and, I'm, and we walk the same direction. She goes, all right, this is my street. See you later. Enjoy England. I'm like, that was lovely. Why was I so suspicious? Oh, I, I, I know because I live in a prison colony and I am a prison guard and so is every prisoner. So I get on this train from Nottingham to Birmingham, right? And I sit down and I'm sat across this, uh, this English girl, right? And I'm in my Melbourne, Australian fucking, we don't talk to strangers, especially not, you know, women we don't know. Because I don't want to scare her. And we're at a table, there's a table separating us. She just starts going, hey, how are you? Where are you going? What are you doing? I'm like, what the fuck? This is going to be a two-hour train trip. Behind me, six black kids, right? In their 20s. And they're being quite loud, right? And then a lone 60-year-old white man comes up and starts talking to them. And they start yelling and, and uh, ribbing each other a little bit. And then he goes, hang on, I'm going to go and get my friends. And I'm thinking, holy fuck, there's going to be a brawl. All right? This is crazy. I've seen these riots on the news. 60-year-old bloke gets, comes back with six drunk, white 60-year-old dudes. And then they just sit down with the black kids and they have a fucking lovely time. Then 
the whole train ride. They're just laughing, talking about football, singing football songs, having an amazing time. I'm talking to this girl across me. Then this young couple get on and they sit in the booth opposite to us, right? They bring on fucking drinks for everyone, just handing out drinks. You can drink in public here, or at least it's not policed. I don't know the rules, but they brought on drinks for everyone. They just start handing out cans. Everyone just starts like, we're at the fucking pub now. It's a two hour train trip. It's the pub. We're all talking. The black kids, the old guys, this girl, me, the young couple, everyone's completely different. And everyone's just like fucking hanging out and having a great time. It's not even a Friday. It's like a fucking Thursday. My mind is spinning. I'm going, what the fuck is going on? Then I'm talking to this girl. I've been on the train for about 30 minutes. And she goes, hang on, where were you going? And I'm like, Birmingham. And she goes, ooh, I'm going to London. Are you on the right train? I'm like, yeah, yeah, this is the train that I was supposed to get. She goes, no, I think you might have needed to have changed at one of the stops. And I was like, huh? I look it up on the train app. It was the first train I had booked that had an exchange. I had to get off at the previous stop and change to continue to Birmingham. And she goes, oh, don't worry. I'm sure you'll be able to get off at the next one. We both look it up. The fastest way for me to get from where I was to Birmingham was to go all the way to fucking London. Two hours on the train. All right? I tried to go from Nottingham to Birmingham, which was about a two-hour train trip. I ended up on a three-hour train trip to fucking London And remember, I had just spent eight hours in autistic heaven, all right? I'm there for fucking, I was at Warhammer World for eight hours. I smell like the nerds I was surrounded with. I'm exhausted. I've been talking to like 10 fucking English people on this train for three hours. I've had enough. I arrive at London at like fucking 10 p.m. And I'm trying to work out how the fuck do I get from London to Birmingham? There are no trains that go direct. Like that's not a route that people take. And I'm thinking, oh, maybe I'll just stay in like a $30, $40 hostel for the night in London and then leave in the morning. But then I remember I got to check out tomorrow morning and get to the next fucking city. So I have to get Back to Birmingham tonight. This girl is in London. She's trying to fucking help me because she knows (laughs) she can see that I am absolutely hopeless at trying to figure this out. We together plan the only route that would get me from here to there. There were two options, right? I had to go all the way from London. I had to get on a train for about an hour. And this girl, God bless her, Took me halfway there on the train because it kind of, it didn't deviate from where she was going too much. Like, this is how fucking friendly these people are. They're they're absolutely lovely, right? So she's like, oh, it'll make my trip 15 minutes longer, but that's all right. I'll just get on this lane with you and I'll, I'll make sure that you're on the right way because she's already seen me fucking pulling my hair out. Like, on the train, I realized that I had to, I had to take a two hour train to London just to get to Birmingham and I screamed, fuck, on the train. And then the black kids and the 60-year-old men just start chanting, he missed his train. He's got no brain. Which was very funny for them, but I wanted to fucking make the news. <laughs> anyway, this girl, God bless her, she, we, she, we plan out a route. My fucking phone's dying. I write it all down, right? And I get on the train. And I, and I go from London to fucking Heathrow Airport where there was supposed to be a bus that would take me from Heathrow Airport to fucking Birmingham, a bus, all right? And by the way, three-hour bus trip. So I've spent fucking eight hours at Warhammer World. I've spent three hours going from Warhammer World to fucking London, the complete opposite direction. Now I've taken another hour trip to Heathrow Airport where I have to get on a fucking three-hour bus. A bus, right? Anyway, there are two different bus routes. 
Terminal 1 and Terminal 2. I get to Terminal 1 um, and I, I don't even know what time it is. It's like it's almost midnight, right? I get to Terminal 1. All those buses were cancelled. Okay, so now I'm fucked. Now I'm like, holy shit, what do I do? I ask a guy, he goes, look, there's a bus that goes to Manchester via Birmingham, all right? And I'm like, when does it leave? And he goes, oh, in like 10 minutes. I'm like, cool, how often does it leave? And he goes, this is the last one. It leaves at 12.30. It's like fucking 12.20, dude. So I run to the back to the train to take a train to the next terminal where that bus was leaving from, right? And I get, I, I, the train is late. I'm sitting there fucking going, oh my God, I'm going to have to stay in London. I'm fucked. My phone is dying. If my phone dies, I can't f- figure out where I should go for a hostel. Oh, by the way, I'm also at Heathrow Airport. So if I get stuck at Heathrow Airport, I'm going to have to take a fucking train an hour back to London. So it'll be like 1 a.m. and I'll be looking for a hostel. Will they even be open? I'm going to sleep on the street, right? So I take the, I, the, the train finally arrives and then I, and we get to the next terminal where the last bus is. I'm fucking sprinting, trying to read directions on the signs as I sprint past them. I'm yelling at people, where's the bus terminal? Where's the bus terminal? This guy's just like, it's over there. The bus is scheduled to leave at 12.30. It's 12.33. My phone's on 3%. I'm fucking sprinting. I get to the bus terminal. There's one bus pulling out. I fucking bash on the window. Stop, stop. The door opens. I'm like, is this the train to Manchester? The bus to Manchester? He goes, yeah. I'm like, does it stop at Birmingham? He's like, yes, I get on it. I don't have a ticket. I could not figure out how to buy a ticket. I just fucking get on. I'm fair evading. (laughs) And it's fucking 12.33. It's the final bus. The guy's like, man, you're so lucky. I was, I just had to run to the bathroom. If I didn't have to wee, you would have been stranded. I'm like, I know. He goes, do you have a ticket? I'm like, yeah, I'll try and find it. I'll just, let me just put my backpack down. And he's like, all right, cool. Go sit down, bring it back. And I just go sit down and I just, I just cross my fingers and hope he shows mercy. I don't fucking show him the ticket. He he either forgets or he hears my accent and my desperation and goes, I'm not going to. It's, it's 12.30. I'm not going to kick this poor traveler off the fucking bus. And dude, I am at this point so unbelievably fucking exhausted, but I'm so paranoid that I don't want to go to sleep because I know that if I go to sleep, I'm going to wake up in Manchester at like 5 a.m. instead of Birmingham at 3.30. So I just sit there like nodding off bashing my head against the window and then waking up and be like I cannot fall asleep I tell like three people around me can you please wake me up one guy goes dude I'm gonna be asleep everyone falls asleep I'm the only one awake that isn't driving the fucking bus (laughs) it was the, the the worst shit ever I anyway I finally, finally get to Birmingham at like, it was like 3.30, I think. I just get there. I collapse in my room, which by the way, had no windows. It was like in the middle of the building. I don't know how it was legal. No windows, no ventilation. It was a fucking oven. I get there at 3.30. I have to wake up at 6. (laughs) I just fucking collapse in the clothes that I left to go to Warhammer World in and then I woke up in like three hours and just got up and left again got on the train never never buying a physical ticket ever again all right the 30% Apple surcharge is absolutely worth it because when you buy it on the app it tells you what to do that was the most horrific terrible detour adventure I've ever had I thought I was going to be on the street for sure. Oh man. I thought I thought that like what's going to happen is I'm going to be on the street and then I'm going to get charged like a $200 late checkout fee because I looked at the train timetables to get back to 
Birmingham from London if I left in the morning and it would have like I would have got there an hour after checkout and then I would have had to go on from the train station to my hotel like I just would have been fucked they would have cleaned out my room sold all my shit (laughs) it was the worst dude but all part of the experience man what a story what a fun time and and you know how friendly everyone here is I'm still getting used to and how up for a chat everybody is like that's that's the best way that I can explain it is that like in Australia everyone goes out with their friend group and you hang out with your friend group in England and from what I've seen of Scotland everyone goes out with their friend group but once you arrive you're with the group and everyone's in one group and everyone's bouncing around and talking to each other honestly it's a lot better like it's a lot it's a lot friendlier a lot less suspicious it's it's just nice and i also i noticed this in america new york uh la less so cuz la had that social ladder climbing thing that i really didn't like there was a lot of like oh this guy has some followers maybe i could get something to or you'd talk to someone and they that when they'd figured out that you couldn't really do anything for them they would get noticeably less interested it felt kind of fake and social climbing but new york was very friendly um and much more open to chat and i thought it was just like an american thing of like even the la people like even though it was a little bit social climbing they were more open to talk to you and find out about you and be like oh cool that's really cool about that i'll ask you a few questions now that you've answered those questions here's a little bit about me and it's like a lot more open and and uh, curious uh, and I thought, so I thought it was an American thing, but I actually maybe have realized that uh, what is actually true is that the closed off, suspicious, why is this person talking to me? I don't know this guy. I don't know this girl. What's the ulterior motive? I think that's actually an Australian thing. So it's not that Americans are more open and curious and people in the UK are more open and curious. I think that people in Australia are a lot more closed off and suspicious um just an interesting thing that i've noticed from being here and it's uh so much better here i i quite like the the attitude and you know you know what i'm like i don't fucking like talking to anyone and that like i am the biggest prison guard of the, of the colony <laughs> i don't like talking to strangers and shit um so i've really kind of gotten out of that uh headspace but it's taken me a while Anyway, I suppose we should do miscellaneous bit at the end. I've got a banger for you here. I've got a great email. If you want to send an email uh, to the show, send it through the loose uh, podcast at loosespears.com. Uh, th- this is the part where if, if you need some life advice, if you have a question for me, if you want me to talk about a particular subject or want my thoughts on something or you have uh, you want me to give you advice on anything in the world or if you have an embarrassing story or a tale you'd like to tell, send an email to podcast at loosespears.com and I'll get back to you. All right, here we go. Subject line. Also, this segment is sponsored by Patreon. The best way to support the show is to uh, jump on Patreon. You get early access to episodes and you get uh, bonus Patreon episodes uh, every single week. I've got a little backlog that I'm working through. Uh, I've recorded them. I haven't found the internet to upload them. I'm sorry, but they will be coming over the next few days as I make my way back to Australia. But I have been recording them, so they will be there. Anyway, that's that'll be on Patreon. Um, also, buy the merch, loosebeers.com. Did I cheat on my wife? Hey, Lou. What a, what a subject line. Love this already. Hey, Lou. Love your stuff and happy to hear that you're feeling so much better after all your surgeries. Thank you, buddy. Um, so, on to the story. I'll try to keep it as concise as possible. My wife and I got married a year ago after being in a relationship for 18 months prior to the wedding. Yes, I know. Very fast. Very fast indeed. 18 months. That's quick. 18 months, I feel like... I don't think you can marry someone until you have like a fucking disaster happen and you see how they respond, how you as a team respond, you know, that's, I feel like that's the, like something terrible has to happen, a death or an emergency, or you get on a train to one city, you end up on the other side of the country and you have to get home on a bus at 3am or you're going to sleep on the street, all right? When you see how someone responds to that, then you can decide if you should marry them. Anyway, um, onto the story. Okay, I've uh, we we got married after eighteen months. We've been married for a year. 
We've had our struggles, which I won't get into here, but about two months ago, she broke things off with me. Since then, I've been trying to look for a rental to move out to with my dog. At least you get the dog, man. You win. Um, so until I find a place, I've been staying at hers. Ooh, that's rough. The divorced roommate. Bad enough having a, having a roommate who's divorced that wasn't married to you. You know, a divorced roommate is rough. Because you, cause you got to fucking be with them through their midlife crisis. Imagine if the person going through their midlife crisis buying leather jackets and cheap motorcycles was the guy that you were married to. That's bad enough. That's like when, when you go to university and there's like a mature age student. Some guy who's like 45. He's like, I need to change. I'm going to study music production. And he just fucking vapes on a tram. That's a guy that I, I knew. Very sad existence. Um... Okay, we've had, our, uh, we've had our struggles, which I won't get into here, but about two months ago, she broke things off with me. Since then, I've been trying to look for a rental to move out to with my dog. So until then, I find a place, and so until I find a place, I've been staying at hers. Within those couple of months, we've hooked up a dozen or so times. Right, yeah, because everyone gets a little bit horny. And if you guys have been fucking, and then, you know, you probably have gotten pretty good at having sex with each other, be hard to stop that cold turkey. But you can't be doing that, bro. You, are you divorced or are you not? You can't be... You can't... You got to move out. All right? I know it's only been two months, but fuck, dude. You got to get out of that. You can't... You can't be... Because you won't be able to move on. Neither of you are moving on. If you're, Are you getting divorced or are you just fucking and not saying I love you anymore? Like That just sounds like you're, you've, you've moved from having a marriage to a bad marriage and you're pretending you're getting divorced. You got to get out, dude. You can't be, you cannot be hooking up with her. You can't be living with her. But also you can't be living with her and hooking up with her. Like, that's no good. Anyway, however, after she ended the marriage, she started talking to a different guy in a different state. She told me about two days after we broke up, she was saying to him they were together. Basically online, but they were together, if it makes sense. Okay, so she's, so... She's just cheating on you. Well, not really, because you guys are broken up, but, you, but you're hooking up. This is messy, bro. This is not good for anyone. This is not good for the guy that she's talking to. She can't be e-dating someone else, pretending she's not in a relationship with you and every now and then fucking you. That You can't be doing that, brother. you got to have some respect for yourself. This is not on. So I started talking to other people, and I was talking to this girl who was just looking for some fun. Same to me as I don't want to get straight into a different relationship. Yeah, because you're still in this one with your ex-wife. I was talking to the girl for a few weeks, but my wife and I were still having sex. And she started to regain feelings and floated the idea of getting back together. Still move out though, but basically start things over again. No, don't do this, dude. You can't do this. Does she know that you're talking to someone else? She sounds like a fucking toddler. You know how kids or dogs do this, where they're playing with their toy, then they move over to a bone, so you pick up their toy, now they're interested in that toy again. She's interested in you because somebody else is. She's getting possessive over something that she tried to drop. You can't be doing that. Now, I stopped talking to that girl the day after, and she said to me she was going to break things off with the guy, but she said it was t- it would take some time because she's made friends with some of his friends. Oh, okay. That's exactly what I said, dude. I haven't even read this whole email. I know what's going on. She started talking to someone else. She loved that because she still gets to fuck you and talk to someone else. So you start talking to someone else. She gets jealous. Oh, you can't have a girlfriend. Oh, what? Gets you to dump this girl. Won't dump this guy. Bro, have some respect for yourself. You can't be doing this. You got to leave this woman for real. I stopped talking to that girl the day after and she said to me she was going to take some take, going to break things off with this guy. But she said it would take some time because she's made some friends with some of his friends. So she wanted to end things on good terms. Why would you have to do that if you're ending things and I assume they've not met? Since then, it's been about a month and she still hasn't stopped talking to him but was being honest that we were together and she was going to do it. Doesn't sound like it's being honest. Dude... That's exactly what I said. She got jealous that you started to move on. She sabotaged you moving on and finding someone else 
but she's not doing the same for you. You can't do this, bro. This, this is very selfish of her and very silly of you. You're going to get really fucking hurt. She's got two boyfriends now, brother. But a few nights ago, she talked to me and said, maybe we should take a break from everything. I fucking knew it. No sex and just work on ourselves while she sorts things out with the guy. She said we were somewhat together, but on a break. Just writing this, I'm confused. So hopefully you're keeping up. I'm not confused, dude. She's got two boyfriends and you have a, have a girlfriend that's cheating on you. That's, that's what's going on. She's having her cake and eating it too, and she's preventing you from moving on. That's why you're so confused, because you thought you were breaking up. You started talking to someone else. She gave you false hope so that you would drop this girl that you could maybe form a good connection with. Now that you're interested in her again, she's lost interest in you, and she's gone back to this guy, all right? I guarantee you, dude, if you start talking to other women, she's going to get jealous and come back. Which is why you got to move out of that house and get away from this woman. Because all she's going to do is make you put your entire life on hold while she decides if she wants to fucking cheat on you or not. Alright? That's not a relationship, dude. Either she's single or she isn't. And I don't think this is salvageable either. The damage is done, dude. You can't... You guys should not be married. Alright? You got married too young. She doesn't know what she wants. You got to get away from it. Now, she did say that if I can't wait, I can have sex with another girl, but that means that she can too. I was honestly okay with that, but at the end of the day, we both said to each other, we are endgame. I don't know what that means. We are endgame. As like, we have ended the relationship? We both said to each other, we are endgame. And the morning after we started being in a break, I re-downloaded Snapchat and started talking to the girl I was talking to before... After talking for a day or so, we planned to hook up. I talked to my wife about it, so I wasn't hiding anything from her, but she said that I was cheating on her. I fucking told you. Dude, she just wants to be able to fuck other people, but doesn't want you to be able to do that. You got to get away from this woman, dude. This is not a relationship. (laughs) She said we need to take a break and stop seeing each other. And she's got a fucking boyfriend over the internet but if you start to move on you're cheating on her huh dude this woman is gonna ruin your fucking mental health run i talked to my wife about it so i wasn't hiding anything but she said i was cheating on her talking sexually with another woman when you have a wife is cheating i understand i shouldn't have done anything so quickly and should have given it some time but i was thinking we were going to be on this break for months Hopefully this isn't too long. And if you need any other information, then let me know. Keep up the great work. Yeah, here's the extra information I would like to know. When the fuck are you moving out? That's what I'd like to know. When if, when are you signing the rental agreement? Get your dog. Get the fuck out. Fuck this other girl. You got to leave this woman. That is not someone you want to be in a relationship with. You saying, I understand I shouldn't have done this. Like, dude... You realize that she's already doing this? Like, she told you that she wanted a divorce. She started talking to this other guy. I guarantee you they've had way more sexual conversations than you have had with this girl, all right? She obviously hasn't told you about any of this stuff. She's being much less honest with you than you are with her. She's fucking moved on from you and only started to show interest in you when you started talking to someone else because she got worried about losing you, even though she's already fucking talking to other people. All right. Then, as soon as you agree to focus on her and not talk to other women, you stop talking to other women. She stopped. She doesn't stop talking to other men. And then, as soon as you focus on her, she loses interest in you completely. And says, oh, actually, I don't want to play with you anymore. You're boring. So you go back to this girl. She gets jealous and says you're cheating while she's still talking to this dude that she's essentially in a fucking relationship with while saying that you're cheating on her for Snapchatting a chick. Like, dude, get the fuck out of this relationship. Get a divorce. Move out. Show yourself some respect. You're not cheating on her. You guys aren't in a relationship anymore. All right? 
If you're cheating on her, what is she doing? All right? This 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 chick has a fucking boyfriend that she never broke up with, even though she forced you to stop talking to this other girl. Then she tells you, oh, actually, I don't want to be in a relationship with you at all again. You go back to this girl. Now you're cheating on her. I'm sorry. Aren't you on a break? Aren't you guys single? Get out of the fucking house, dude. Don't wait for the divorce. Just fucking move out. Stay on a friend's couch. Figure it out, dude. I assume you have a job. You've got a dog. Take the dog. Get the fuck out. Figure it out later. I guarantee you, dude, as soon as you get out of that house and you get away from the fucking mental prison she's obviously put you in, where you're like, oh, she told me that we're no longer together, but it was cheating to talk to someone else. It No, it's not. All right? She's gaslighting the fuck out of you to the point where you think you're the villain in this story. You're being manipulated, dude. She has a fucking boyfriend. All right? You're not allowed to talk to girls. She has a boyfriend who she won't break up with because, oh, I'm friends with his friends. Brother. Wake up to yourself, all right? At this point, it's your fault, all right? If you stay in this fucking house, whatever heartbreak occurs to you is your fault and your choice. It's going to happen. It's going to keep happening. Get out. Have some respect for you. You're better than this. You deserve better than this. Leave, all right? Sort the divorce out whenever you can, but priority one, get out of the house. Move out find a new place and then start working on the divorce. This is not a relationship you want to be in. Your relationship will not recover from this. You've, In fact, you've already tried and said, you know what? I agree. Let's fix our relationship. You stopped talking to the girl. You gave her a chance. She still has a fucking boyfriend, brother, who she won't stop talking to. All right? All that has happened since this whole thing has started is she's put you in a prison where she'll fuck you sometimes if you're lucky but is being a terrible wife has a boyfriend she's much more interested in and the minute you start to move on she goes no come back and puts you back in your fucking cage and makes you apologize get out dude show yourself some respect that's the end of the episode. I'm going to continue on Patreon. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for watching. I'm in Glasgow right now. I've got two shows left uh, that by the time you're listening to this, unless you're a Patreon supporter, uh, I've already done them. So thank you so much for an amazing tour. I'll probably talk about this more when I'm home uh, in Melbourne. I've loved, loved, loved this. Uh, for, the, for the love of God, don't buy a physical ticket in the, on this fucking continent. Get the app. It's worth the surcharge, all right? Thank you so much. Uh, I'm loving this. I'm so tired. I'm having so much fun. This is my dream. How amazing. All right? Have a shit one. Buy the merch. Buy the merch. Lucybeers.com. You got like three weeks. All right? And then it's gone. We're probably not going to do a restock. All right? It's pre-order only. If you miss out, you miss out. All right? Have a shit one. Buy the merch. (laughs) 